PMS, pregnancy, menopause. Each stage of womanhood has its unique challenges. That's why Highlands Naturals' new women's multivitamins are formulated with daily essential nutrients, plus targeted support for your life stage. PMS? Highlands has a multi for that. Pregnant and having morning sickness? That too. In the throes of menopause, we've got you covered. No matter what phase of life you're in, Highlands Naturals is here for it. Find your multi on Amazon or at highlands.com. Where are you now? Uh, are you in Nashville? Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, okay. Back in the G O G O A. My my whole family loves here, so it's kind of nice to be back. Well, good. So you grew up here? Yeah, I grew up here, and then um, I moved away. I went to Manhattan for college, and then I moved over to. Well, I moved back here for one year, did a movie, and then moved to L.A. I was like, ah, I'll just try it. And then the acting thing, I was like, yeah, I need a break. So then I started learning guitar. And then I moved back here. Well, I moved back here for a year and then moved to Nashville for like two years and then came back here. Yeah. So where did you grow up here in the, in the ATL area, Metro? Sandy, Sandy Springs-ish, like between there and like Dunwoody area, like that whole little area. What, what high school did you go? I went to St. Pius. <laughs> Pious, I know that. Hi, hi, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> so were you interested in acting, performing, just very little growing up, or how did oh. they get the bug? So growing up was like, that was when I was able to just walk and talk. I remember putting on Annie for my mom every day. Oh. You know she must have hated it. Like my dream, I was like, I want to be Annie on Broadway. <laughs> 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 so then... I've always loved singing and I love being on stage and just love the way it kind of, you could share and the family you create when you do theater shows. And, you know, there's just something, it's special. And if you've never done it, it's like, it's hard to explain it. You know what I mean? I guess it's like a team. It's the same thing. You create this family and you kind of look out for each other and you get like really, really deep and personal when you're doing characters, you know, it's just cool. I love that. I miss it, but you know, the acting thing is tough, just like anything else. And you're finding, you've been finding that on music for how many yeah. years now? So that's... Right. <laughs> but the music, I will tell you, and I always tell my actor friends, is the music gave me the ability to always be performing. Because, like, if you just, I mean, I still got open mic nights. You know what I mean? Like, you just go, like, you can always find somewhere to play or you can play at home. But, like, as an actor, we're going to do sit around and do monologues. <laughs> like, <hey. laughs> you know what I mean? Get it the costs mirror. money, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Acting just got too expensive. I was like, dude, I got to get new headshots. Can't ever change your hair. You know what I mean? Like, it's a pain in the butt. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But it's just hard, man. Doing both at the same time is very, very difficult. So going through St. Pius, uh, you were thinking about what school you would be going to. Uh, how did you arrive on ending up in New York? Oh, for college? Yeah. Well, okay, so... It was based, I think pretty much all the schools I looked at were in New York because it always been my dream to do Broadway. And plus that, you know, when you're in high school, you're like, I'm going to get as far away as I can, man. And then that freedom. There was just something about New York that just enticed me, you know what I mean? And then the school that I went to, I had a scholarship um, offer from American Academy of Dramatic Arts and then um, for theater and then at Marymount Manhattan for theater. But my dad said it, and I actually was a teenager and listened this time, which is shocking. But he said, you know, you're going to want, he goes, do whatever you want. It's your scholarship. But, you know, you're probably going to want to have some sort of degree, which, you know, going to AMDA is just going to theater school, which is awesome. But do you know what I mean? Nowadays, it's nice to have that. He was right. You know, you have the, you have the associates with the bachelors and masters or whatever. It's uh, right. at least you have that. You could always take that wherever you need to go. That's that's a very good uh, recommendation. Right, I know. Yay, dad. <laughs> I'm dad too. I'm like, you need to at least get a bachelor. So I said, hey, you know, she went to South Carolina, and right. uh, my daughter wanted to go into advertising, so. Nice marketing and that stuff has at least, yeah. at least get something so she went through there and and actually graduated well before this pandemic which is just like oh she's so lucky oh, oh my gosh i know well like a year in advance of that so it's i just can't like, imagine if i was stuck in new york during this i'd be going bananas yeah i can't my friends who live in new york they're just like because they were so closed up during the whole thing it's like at least here in georgia you know, I could walk to the park and a lot of us would just 
go up to the park and see people. So you're never really alone alone. You know what I mean? Which I think is so much better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we are somewhat opened up and you're able to do it during this pandemic. Like so many artists, you're able to do your open mics in in the area. I know because there's so many outdoor venues. The only thing I do worry is like in about a month, what's going to happen to all of us? Because do you know what I mean? There's, it's going to be too cold to play outside and people are going to start staying home again. And then bars are going to start not having money again to pay artists. It gets a little, a little scary, but just got to kind of hope for the best. But for all of them to get space heaters and they manufacture those, you can at least play outside. I know, right? (laughs) I'm prepared, man. I'm like, I'll play outside. It's okay. I've got space heaters. We're good. (laughs) <laughs> like you know and you get the fingerless gloves and you know you just it's just like being super hot during a gig you're just super cold and sad what else <laughs> i'll deal with it <laughs> yeah it's really so this is really thrown off a lot of people just because they made their bread and butter it's you, you know this you're making the money more from playing live than recording recording Way more. Is nice to do yeah but, you know, and getting publishing rights as well. I know. And that's what I, you know, I wish to goodness that honestly, I was better at the computer and could do my own recording. Because God, think about it. It's like six months. I could have popped out tons of records. Mm. I just never really, that part of it, I always kind of left everybody else. I just am not that good at it. Well, that's, that's okay. really tough. Yeah. I mean, because your right brain is, is, is fighting with the left. Your left is, is the logical yeah. part and your right is art artistry. That's yeah. You both. It's so weird. You're just like, dude. All right. It's kind of like learning seriously slick lead guitar parts. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. That's what all the other guys were for. You know, like I just like to write it and I, you know, I can hold my own on the guitar but I don't need to know how to do all that cool stuff. I just watch and go, Wow, man, you're awesome. <laughs> you know I mean? I feel like that's their job, and this is my talk. <laughs> so growing up, um, who were your inspirations? I hear little Natalie Merchant. Uh, yeah, I love, her. I love her. But it's so funny because I didn't realize it. I guess I didn't really start playing music till I was, um, we'll just say after college. I don't want to date myself too much. But after college was when I picked up a guitar. So I was kind of the late comer. I wish to God I'd picked up a guitar when I was 12. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, damn, I probably would have been sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. That should have, would have, could have. I wish I could have yeah. way younger. I would have blown right. up. Right. But you know what? I never thought I could do what I'm doing. You know, like I didn't have the, the wherewithal to go, oh, I have all these hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do classes because we didn't have YouTube to learn everything. You know, like. I learned by watching other people and like just dedicating myself three hours a day going, I'm going to learn that chord, that chord, that chord, yeah, 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 you know, over and over again. But I would like draw stuff on napkins, like what they were doing with their fingers, like these little drawings. And I would go home and be like, okay, okay, sweet. I think that's a G, but I don't know, you know? And you just ask, I always tell the younger kids, I'm like, always hang out with people that are better at what you do or want to do than yourself. Because you will always be learning and you'll always get better. You know, that's very doesn't mean, surprise. don't you think, I mean, honestly, it's with anything. You know oh, I, mean? I would tell anybody that. Yeah. Always try to learn from the masters. That's why they have right. master classes and things. Right. Like that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to teach a master class. I can make a fortune. Yeah. Uh, everyone's always like, well, I don't have enough money. And I go, dude, I didn't have any money doing that. I had just moved to LA. I was broke as all. I was like, you just go ask people. People are so excited. You 90% of the time I'd say people are excited that go, oh, yeah, do you want to play guitar? Sweet. Yeah, I'll show you a couple chords real quick. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting when other people get excited. So, so how long were you in L.A.? After, so after New York, uh, how long were you out there? I think it was about, oh, shoot, 11 or 12 years. Wow. Yeah, it was a good long, you know, I would never take back that time. It was such a great time in my life. I, You know, I learned so much about myself and... I don't know, it just having the mountains and the beach right there. And, you know, when you were just not having a bad day, you can just drive down the beach and sit there and write whatever you want to write. But, you know, when you're surrounded by music, and I love this, the most people there are struggling a little bit. So they've always got this constant energy of go, go, let's get something bigger and better and bigger and better for ourselves. 
with music or acting or arts or whatever it is. And it's just like, it's kind of good to be around it because it kind of makes you not, you know, go, and good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which I think it's yeah. it, there in New York City are probably the two places I feel like people are best at that. Just motivating each other and motivating yourself. is just, there's something in the air, you know. It's kind of caught on here in, in the Atlanta area over the last decade I or see so. It. Hollywood kind of came here and you know, yeah. a lot of artists. The more we get, the better it's going to get with that, where you just kind of, all right, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's do this. this is awesome. But out in LA, you could see the inspiration like Laurel Canyon, how like you had Crosby, Stills, and Nash get really big. Uh, oh, yeah. Mitchell, uh, uh, the Eagles. Uh, you Everybody. Could, like, <laughs> gosh, yeah, I mean, the Southern California scene must have been so fascinating. You could probably yeah. see, you probably were able to see that back when you were there, back in the late yeah. 70s, though, it must have been. My friend had a place up in Laurel Canyon and um, he used to write for Broadway and I don't know, you know the show, but I remember when he was writing that show and it became a huge hit on Broadway, but he used to have these little Laurel Canyon parties and he had this cool little house tucked away in the hills. And it was all these people who were my customers at the coffee shop that I worked at. But it was like Alanis Morissette and like all these people that, you know, before I lived in LA for a while, I probably would have been like, oh my God, that's so amazing. But you just don't think about it because you're living there and you're all kind of hanging out, chatting about music and stuff. And I was like, yeah, this must have been what it was like back then. You know? Very Those were my times. I just got born in the wrong times. <laughs> <laughs> gotta bring it back, man. I, I think you. we all feel that way. I used to uh, make films when I was a teenager and all the way through college. And oh, nice. And I have a YouTube channel and I'll get like messages. I'm like, you were around in the eighties. Oh my God. What I would have given to be around in that time. And I'm like, it was, it was not a big deal. Trust yeah. me. You're like, and the clothes were really bad. <laughs> it's kind of surreal because like when I was a teenager, it was like the sixties. Wow. It must've been so cool at Woodstock. Yeah, I know. Right. It's so funny. Like I do feel like the nineties and early two thousands the music that came out of there was so freaking rad. Do you know what I mean? There was some, think about just rock and roll wise. Dang. Like we had some killer rock and roll. I think it really became more organic, more real of uh, the Seattle scene that came down. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, that's why everyone's like, so what do you play when I do cover gigs and stuff? And they're like, so what do you play? And I'm like, I don't know. I like everything. I said, I just don't sing rap because I look like an idiot if I try because it's just like, Julie Tempo, just stop, just stop. It's not working for you, you know? But I like everything. Like, there's always great songs, even if you're not, like, say you're not a huge country fan, not one person isn't, like, here's Johnny Cash. Like, I hate Johnny Cash. I'm like, who? if they do, you're like, I, you need to go. They'll at least like one song. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I know I you like this song. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything can be incredibly inspirational. So did you get started doing covers and you were covering, you know, anything from folk and country to rock? So when I first started playing music, see, I was in LA and in LA, you don't have to do the cover gigs like you do here. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I literally didn't play any cover music until I moved back here. I played a few covers. Yeah. And, but it was only because I really wanted to learn that cover. You know what I mean? Because I love that song. But it was a lot of The Cure and, like, Black Crows and stuff like that. And I love Nina Simone, so, you know, older stuff. But it was just so funny because when I got back here, I was like, oh, crap, like, I got to make a living. Because I was, like, selling music and writing for TV and stuff like that. And, wow. and then working at the coffee shop. And then I would go on tour and make my money and come home. You know what I mean? So I just, it was so different out there for that. Here, it's like, even the open mics, people are playing cover music. I'm like wait, you're at open mic. Like, this is your opportunity to not have to play that stuff. What are we doing? Stop it. <laughs> you know, which I appreciate it, but it's like, man, I want to hear some original music. Like, come on. I think it's, it's that way in most markets. I think LA, New York is where you can do the originals and try new material out on audiences. <laughs> in most yeah. markets, it's like, I want to hear the hits. Come on. I know. And it's so funny. I always go, if you're not paying, it ain't a cover. <laughs> like, I'm not doing covers. I'm not being paid for it. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, do whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just, you have to draw the line somewhere, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. 
<laughs> it kind of all comes full circle though, because you look at legacy artists and they're all of a sudden doing a lot of covers. It's like here they have a batch of originals and then they yeah. kind of like they end up I just try and pick stuff I like. You know what I mean? Like I say when you don't do covers you absolutely hate or else it shines through and it you just you look like you're bored and you're not having any fun. You know? It's hard to keep it fresh, so I just keep trying to keep learning new stuff so it's fun and fresh and I'm excited about singing it again, you know? Yeah, yeah. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options. And at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. New on Curiosity Stream. How do you connect a 16th century potato to limitless energy production? Could Napoleon's toothpick have a direct link to a machine that predicts the future? And how can a 1700s conch shell chart a course to humans connecting their brains to the internet? James Burke's visionary series, Connections, returns for a new generation. Experience all new Connections. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. How long have you been officially in the music business now since before 05, since your, uh, before your first album? So the first time I, okay, so my, <laughs> I'll do it this way. My first show was in 2001, 2000, no, 2002 probably. And then my buddy from, I was going to open mic nights every night. And then my buddy and open mic night, he, uh, was gonna, he was like, I wanna start producing records. I was like, well, Avi, you're guinea pig, let's do it. And so he did my first album, my very first album. And then with that album, I ended up getting interest from a record label. And then they put me on a tour. So it was quick, it was like within a year. Wow. And then I broke away from that and then did my own thing with um, Dan Lavery. And he saw me at Open Mic Night, we started working together. And then a guy from Westlake Audio, that work there he's like hey listen i'd love to record you but we have to record from midnight to like 7 a.m and that way it's free and i was like we got this i was a bit younger then <laughs> but um it was a bit easier back in the day <laughs> but we would record from like midnight till 7 a.m and then i would go straight from there and work at the coffee shop from 7 to 2 and then i'd go home and sleep and then do the same thing and then that album was what got craig ferguson's attention and that's how all that started coming after that but I wait. He was. Um, I waited tables. That's how I met him. That's how you met him. You met him waiting tables. I gave him his mint tea in the morning. And I you gave him a CD and said, "Here." I gave everybody my CD. I was like, I go, "Here's my CD. If you like it." I didn't know who I was handing it to half the time, but a lot of people there were in the business, so I would just give it to everybody. I'm like, if you don't like it, use it as a coaster. I don't care. Just take it. I have too many or something like that. You know, I have too many. But I ended up. I gave it to a Nickelodeon guy that. He was the one who got all my music on Nickelodeon. But you know what I mean? You never know who you're giving it to in LA. So that's why you always got to be nice. So. Oh, you got to always network. But Craig Ferguson seems so genuine. I mean, I've talked with a lot of comedians, done a lot of interviews, and uh, yeah. he just seemed incredibly down to earth. He, You know what? He was just the nicest person because I asked him the next day, I was like, why did you do that? And he goes, because I can, Julie. It's like, it's really nice to help. He's like, because I can right now and it's nice to be able to give back to somebody that's working so hard because I see you here every day and I'm like he goes with a smile on your face I'm like well I am trying to make the tips gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> so <laughs> I love really that like, remark he made it was on your second appearance about waitressing and oh yeah no horribly wrong <laughs> <laughs> I was like you're such a dork <laughs> I was like that's <laughs> awesome he didn't even tell me he was always on the show you know how he told me so his assistant called like in the afternoon one day and said, hey, um, this is Craig Ferguson's assistant. He wants you to watch the show tonight. And I was like, oh, crap. He's going to play some practical joke on me. Because that's the kind of guy he is. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I was at a party that night, and we had a couple drinks. And um, I was like, oh, shit. Craig told me to watch the show tonight. Can you guys put it on the show? So they turn it on, and it was just at his monologue. And he like does his monologue. He sits down, and he pulls up my CD on camera, and I'm like, 
what's happening? He goes, so this is my waitress at the cafe I go to, whatever. He's like, we're going to have her on the show soon. So that's how I found out. I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it was <laughs> nuts, dude. I was like, you really teased it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's so that's what I saw him the next morning, and I was like, what just happened? <laughs> I go, I got your tea for the rest of the year, man. Past that, you're on your own. <laughs> so it's a I got big lucky. Coup. That really is. So being on that show twice, how did that feel like <laughs> telling everybody, look, I'm on network TV here. This is... It's, you know what? It just really opened doors to be able to talk to people. Because, oh, you know, yeah. LA is really hard, and it's so competitive. So when you have at least something, and he knew that, it's like, number one, I had a great video to promote, you know, because yeah. it's such great. And it makes you feel good, too, because you get out there and you're like, okay, I did that. Like, that's a bucket list thing, you know? I did that. And I did it on my own with nobody helping me, you know, just by being nice at the cafe, you know? So I think that that kind of thing. He said, he was like, every record you put out, you can come back on the show. Oh, and cool. so. It was cool. So the last time I did it was the Letting Go record. And then, then he went on to another show after that to do the squares or whatever. But the third time I got to have a band, which that was like the coolest thing ever for me. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. What's that like though? Here you've been acoustic solo for so long. How, how was that at, adapting to that? It's so cool. Especially like in LA, I was always so lucky. I got, I've been very blessed here too in Atlanta with just musicians I've met because what happened was my producer set up the band for me because I knew he would get people that were just insanely good it would be dead on so I flew in the day before we rehearsed what a couple times and then we went on the show the next day and they were dead on it's just so nice when a band comes behind you and they do it right or they think of a different lick and they put it in there and you're like it's because when you're writing from your heart you're like dude you just put like my story up on you know sounds so different it's so cool just opens up your world of ah oh, yeah man i just can't afford them all the time because i refuse to not pay musicians the way they're supposed to be paid i can't help oh, them man, at all. They're all working you know what i mean especially when you're touring and, and doing the yeah. full ensemble i'm sure that's got to be tough it's hard yeah. teaching people each time because i don't know keys and stuff because i'm not a theory person like i just kind of play by ear and just do it and so sometimes it's it's hard you know, but I've always just been lucky with the musicians I've gotten and been able to help me with all that. So, like, thank God. Because <laughs> you got to rehearse them and then you got to do all these shows with them. Random people. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, yeah. okay, please don't suck. <laughs> like, I've only <laughs> thrown somebody off the stage once and I threw him off before the second set. I said, you need to leave the stage. I will pay you, but you need to get off the stage right now. Because he was so awful. It was so, like... I can't even tell you that night there was a like 30 person bar brawl too, where oh. my drummer and I were like hiding behind the speakers. <laughs> like, I was like, like they're kill the us. Brothers. <laughs> yeah, totally. Dude, it was seriously like, we're talking girls and guys like jumping over the bar, fighting each other. It was like old school redneck fight. I was like, oh. <laughs> Aiken, South Carolina, baby. What, what? Yeah. Oh yeah. I can oh, yeah. see drinking a little too much, especially here in the South. That was so funny. I was like, holy crap. That was my first show back here with the band. I was like, is this the way that it was always like? Because like, you don't see that out there very often. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've literally never been in a bar with a brawl ever in my life. I was like, what the hell is going on right now, dude? So these so, musicians come up with these great autobiographies because they've got so many stories like that yeah. on stage, off stage, the craziest things. Have you ever read the book, um, They Came to Nashville? I've heard of that. I've heard read of that, that book. You'll enjoy that. It's a story. It's kind of thing. Same kind of thing. Yeah, I'm always fascinated with that. Yeah. The documentaries are really good. Netflix has some really good documentaries right now, like on Tom Petty and a bunch of other ones that are just actually really, they're long, but you got to split them up a little bit. But it's yeah. cool to hear the stories. But they've all paid their dues and, and people like you really have. And I look at something like American Idol and all these talent shows. It's like, that's just like rolling the dice and, and being lucky. And then you see how many really sustain when they're just you know, like basically yeah. given it. Yeah. I think it was literally like when Simon Cowell was on there. If you notice all the people that won when he was judging, they still have a name. Think about yeah. Carrie Underwood, K Kelly Clarkson. But they weren't as awesome when they went on the show. 
Like they actually got better because of all the training that they have to go through when they're, I think that's the only thing is that kind of training could be amazing for a younger artist that's kind of not quite there yet to like help their voices and all that stuff. Cause you gotta be able to perform every night and on stage. And, but I just, it drives me crazy cause it's changed people's perception of what it takes to be an artist, like a real artist. Dude, I teach these kids are like, I'm going to be famous. And I'm like, dude, you got to learn these chords first and practice them, bro. Cause yeah. I remember three hours a day by myself when everybody else was out partying when yeah. I lived in LA, I was researching to book my shows. I was like, yeah. I don't have any regrets, but you know, if you actually want to do it and not pay somebody to do it, because you're not going to make any money if you do, unless you get to a certain point where you're making a crap ton of money, you know, but you gotta, you know, when you're first starting, man, it's all work, no play. The road, it's not as fun oh. as everyone thinks it is. It's exhausting, you know. Gosh, yeah, yeah. It's exhausting. Long it's from the tail, but it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're a girl on the road, dude, because everybody takes oh. care of you. They're so kind to you, and like, they're not off put by some rando coming and staying in their house. They're like, yeah, no problem. Like I never had to pay for a place to stay. I was at a bedroom. You know what I mean? Like it's all good. Like it's all good. <laughs> yeah. It, it's gritty. It's tough, long hours. Uh, the yeah. weather you deal with, the, the bad food, I'm sure. Some good yeah. food, but you know, it's like yeah, totally. the people aren't realizing that. And you're broke most of the time. Bro. So like my trick was always, if you can skip breakfast, unless you're staying in a hotel, staying in a hotel, you always want to grab as much food as possible and bring Tupperware and then put it in a little ice chest and then you got lunch too. <laughs> Hard boiled eggs are perfect for lunch. You can kind of get around it, but I would always have those bars with me everywhere I went. You know, better than nothing. That's why we say, don't ever ask an artist if they want free food. They will take it. <laughs> I don't care what it is. <laughs> Even if you're not hungry, you'll be like, absolutely, I want that burger. It's not a problem. And a pizza. Yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> Very few can make it. And then, you know, we could also tell people who are up and coming because they got these stars in their eyes. There's so many other things you could do in the business, even in recording and all the different types of positions that are out there. If, if oh. you're good at that, you can, you, you can do that. Yeah. The session player, you can do a lot of different things. Totally. That's, are, yeah. they don't understand. There's a lot of little ways you can help yourself. Like the live streaming, when the whole pandemic thing hit and we were locked down, it was like the second it, it happened, I was like, dude, I got to get on live streaming and make it happen. Everyone was like, dude, you do it so much and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't really have a choice because all you people sitting there complaining that you don't have any money, well, at least I'm trying. Like, yeah, yeah. And your fans know you're trying, you know? It's not right. fun. Like um, Eddie's Attic. I don't know if they're coming back open. I, I uh, had spoken I know. with a lot of artists from Eddie's Attic and places like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could do live streaming from their stages. And then you're also on like Venmo and PayPal. to look yeah. the audience know all that stuff. Yeah. But you know what? I will tell you that I felt really good during the whole thing because I feel like I was doing something right personally when I was doing my live streams by not making them super professional. It was just me sitting in the same place I'm right now with my dog and laughing and talking to people. Cause I had a lot of people actually message me and I think it means a lot because I'm used to being out there helping or teaching or playing or, you know, I'm always interacting and for people to message you and go, dude, thank you so much for your live streams. It's really helped me get through this. And I was like, you know what? You feel like, cool. It's kind of like podcasting, same thing. Like, yeah. you know, people literally like, that's what they rely on is that's their interaction as a podcast or a YouTube video or, you know? Completely. It's so important that we get connected like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the dog, uh, <laughs> your companion for many years now, <laughs> I love very mellow. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, she's 12 now. So she's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I love dogs at those ages. Cause they're just so like, yeah, we're just hanging there. They're I know. good comfort. Do you have any pets? I do not. I have a lot of cats that visit me every day. I love kitty cats. <laughs> she loves cats too, but the cats are kind of like, takes them a minute. And I'm like, I promise you, she's more scared of you than you are for her. I promise. 
she'll just sit there and be like, want to play? And I'm like, I don't think they want to play, sweetheart. I'm sorry. <laughs> so she appears in the latest video. This is, uh, which I just yeah. viewed the other day. Uh, that that looks like oh you know, I'm very calming to the to, to the dog. <laughs> I know, that's so funny. So she okay. So the video we just posted up, my buddy and I. It was during the lockdown. I was like, hey man, don't we still have that video that we did on the green screen? Because we did two at, on one day, right? I said, don't we still have that? And I said there was some stuff in there I didn't really want. I said, what if I just put a bunch of my old videos of like fun things I'd done? And I was just trying to find the ones that fit in there and the screen were, that was probably the hardest part. It was so much fun doing that. And I was like, just cause it's such a real little video. It's not some like super over the top. It's like, look at me on an ATV in Costa Rica. Yay fun. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. I was like, it's just different. All my other ones have been like kind of pro and blah, you know. They are really nice videos. How did you get it hooked up on, on getting into videos? Because not a lot of uh, musicians enjoy the process of like, okay, I've mixed the record, boiled it down. I remember certain musicians in the 80s who shall all remain nameless <laughs> with big videos, you know, yeah. which probably sold them even more albums. Totally. Uh, <laughs> how do you, you have an acting background, so it seems to me like it's a little bit more natural. Seeing is believing, and you're not going to believe how bright Bright and vivid the colors are on the Samsung Neo QLED and OLED TVs powered by the neural quantum processor. Because this is an audio ad. Unless you can see it, which means you already have one. Nice. Samsung, more wow than ever. Shop the Plato's Closet Black Friday event in North Charleston and West Ashley and let the deals begin. You know Plato's Closet always has a huge selection of trendy recycled styles at amazing prices, but Black Friday deals are different. They're better. We've been holding back some of our best inventory and you won't want to miss our Black Friday event. Save on gently used styles from Patagonia, Lululemon, Lily Pulitzer, and hundreds of popular brands. Plato's Closet is ready to let the Black Friday deals begin. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue for you yeah i really i have so many ideas in my mind it's just money comes around and messes it all up it's so hard to have money to do videos i was very um <clears throat> lucky to work with um a gentleman that i'd met when i did a nascar show years ago he was the videographer on that and his name's brady brandwood but he always has like we just mesh really good as we're going we don't totally hook up the whole every shot list or anything and we kind of go off each other so it's really fun making videos with him you know because i'm like what about this and he's like yeah and then we add that i'm like yeah exactly let's do it okay let's go you know so it's never like super set up but i think it's kind of better that way yeah i mean it just it does it always and a lot of these clips they just seem to be really natural and you could tell oh gosh you know you could easily act and just combine all the talents and i want to do more yeah. I'm always like, anybody wants to do music videos, I will be your guinea pig. Because there's so many songs, I'm like, God, man, that would be awesome. Because all these kids have videos for like every song. And I go, I'm like, how do you have that much money? Because I know how much money that one costs to make. You know what I mean? Where you go, that's thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, and yeah. You're like a little indie artist. What, what is going on? <laughs> I mean, it must be nice. Technology has changed so much. It used to be you had to really work hard to get a good image, especially when, oh, oh, we had this film back in the day and I'm dating myself. You know, and then videotape happened and yes. that was hard to make something look good. And now, you know, everybody can get a high def camera and decent editing equipment. Yeah, I know. I need to be better at that, but you just get so overwhelmed sometimes. And I mean, I'm sure it's the same with anything that's creative, you know, any of the video people, podcast people, radio people, music, acting, you have all these great ideas and you write them down and you wonder like, am I ever going to be able to finish that one because I'm working on that. And, but then I've got to do all these things just to keep yourself relevant on social media Yeah. that first. And then you're like, well, crap. I have all these songs, I need to write them down and relearn them because they're mine, and so I can get them up. You know, it's just, it's crazy, man. It's, it's a lot, you know? And Wouldn't take still, a while. Yeah, you want to still keep centered. You're a songwriter, so how does that inspiration come to you? How do you, how do you craft a song? Do you have the melody first? I always ask everybody, you have the melody yeah. first, lyrics first? So I've 
only recently started having like ideas for melodies before the words. The written words always come first. And so what I usually do is I'll sit down and go, oh, and then I'll look through and I'm like, oh, well, those lyrics might be kind of cool with this chord. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's always been, mostly the writings always come first because I've always written like stories and poetry and all that kind of stuff, which I love just fashioning the story together, you know? Yeah. Kind of yeah. making it. But lately it's been cool. What I do is I just turn on my little voice recorder on my phone. Like if I'm feeling anything, I just take my guitar and just keep it recording and just start to sing or blah, 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 play a little guitar and, and do it that way. And it's been really interesting seeing what comes out from that. It's hard. Like I'm always, the music's always been the harder part. It's not the words. words yeah. are and to try to really be original too, because there's so much music out there, so many yeah. tunes. I'm like, you must think like, oh, does this sound like yesterday? Does this sound like, you know, am, totally. I, am I ripping somebody off here? I know. That's a, you know, and that's, it's kind of like when you see these people suing people on something and they go, oh, well, it's this, this, this. I'm like, I did not even hear anything of what you're talking about. Like yeah. the, it was that Tom Petty one that just happened with Sam Smith a couple years ago. Stay with me. And it was funny because one day I'm oh, driving, yeah. wasn't it? and I'm like, I'm starting to think of the Tom Petty song. I'm like, but it's nothing like that. But what's getting me to think about that? I know. But that's what I was saying. I was like, Dude, I still didn't hear it. I mean, all it was was, but the chords were inverted. I'm like, but that's right. every song said ever. <laughs> like, I don't even understand. I don't know, it was weird. The tempo in the chorus, which I think kind of has like, but it's so much more slowed down. That, that was a stretch. Hold yeah. on, and they won. I was like, oh my God. And you know, Sam Smith wasn't doing it out of like, well, I'm gonna listen to that Tom Petty song and I'm gonna steal it. You know, he probably <laughs> just wrote a song and it was really good and it was a super huge hit. And <laughs> I don't really believe that Tom Petty was going, yeah, let's sue him. I'm sure he was like, dude, seriously, it's cool, man. It's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't think he really wanted to, but whatever. Lawyers. Yeah. Kisha. Lawyers, oh, they make a fortune. And I'm sure judges are probably like rolling their eyes like, why am I even going through this now? I know, right? You're like, dude, seriously, settle this crap out of court. You <laughs> little... <laughs> You little bitch fest. <laughs> it reminded me going back, and I once interviewed Huey Lewis. And I don't know if he, oh, wow. man, they sued Ray Parker Jr. for the Ghostbusters theme. Oh, and, I forgot about that. And Ghostbusters. And I remember putting them on tape back to back. Uh, right. I want a new drug. I want a new drug and the Ghostbusters theme. And what was constant was like the bass, I think, was very much similar. Yeah. You had to really listen. Right. That's cr <laughs> I know sometimes you just roll your eyes. I'm like, don't you have anything better to do, bro? I'm just saying. <laughs> like, move on. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, move on. And that's like every new country song said ever. They all sound the same. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know why everybody's not suing everybody. Because it's like the same dude in the studio doing 90% of the licks on all the new country music records. Oh, not that sure. it's a bad lick, but it's pretty much the same. Just inverted a little differently. Maybe it's got a different capo. But you know what I mean? It's so similar. It's like, when's that? All those lawsuits are going to start to happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be very busy in Nashville, I'm sure. It's I know, like right? That nouveau Nashville country sound, which really kind of has been dominating probably since the days of Garth Brooks when he first emerged. Yeah. I think a lot of people kind of developed off of that. It was so funny because I was recording my what if record and um <clears throat> i was up and i did it up in nashville in a small little studio and i was sitting there and it was the keyboard player the guy that plays keys for um garth was producing the record and so i'm sitting on this couch waiting because he goes i've got my rehearsal with um the garth brooks band because we're going on tour tomorrow and then i'll be with you and then we'll finish up tonight doing some mixing crap i was like okay cool so i'm sitting on the couch nikki's sitting there and there's this guy sitting next to me so we're talking for about 45 minutes and hanging out with nikki's getting loving from him and stuff and couldn't be nicer guy and then when jeff was done he comes out and he goes okay we're done like let's go grab a drink across the street we'll come back and work i said cool i said goodbye to this gentleman that you know whatever gave me a hug and left and then I go, well, dude, how did y'all do that? I said, did you just like, like FaceTime Garth in when he was singing? He goes, 
Julie, you were sitting next to him for 45 minutes on the couch. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, that was Garth. And I was like, what? Because he's like, he's so normal looking because he's always on this big stage when you see him. Like, you know, I've never seen him just hanging out. And I was like, he's such a normal dude. And he was so nice. I was like, kick ass, man. You just like that, those moments where you go, okay, cool. Because the older country stars, they're bigger than life, you know, usually. And it's just cool. I was like, right on, Garth. Who's the man? It's like it's a good really dude. kind of interesting, yeah, because when you see, so I saw both James Brown and Little Richard in person, and right. they look like, you know, walking, living wax figures, because they're so totally. iconic. Yeah. You, look at, you know, a lot of these other people, John Oates, Billy Joel, who I've seen in person, and they just kind of blend in with the scenery. They have, the, they have their own iconic looks. Right, but yeah. It's just different with uh, newer artists than somebody who's so iconic. Totally. I know you're like, what's going on? I remember when I did the show, the Music City Roots, Jim Lauderdale does those. Yeah. Jim Lauderdale, let me tell you, is probably also one of the nicest people. He is so supportive to every artist that comes on the show and friendly and, you know, doesn't just do the, hey, nice to meet you, fake stuff. Like, he'll actually come and talk to you. Like, he's just a good dude. He's super talented, too, but just a good dude. And John Prine. Oh, him. yes, yes. He's that was a nice dude too. On this uh, podcast, I interviewed, I don't know if you know John McCutcheon. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was pretty close with John Prime. He was just, Aww. seemed like such a sweet guy. Gosh, you talk about somebody who really went from normal, ev- everyday, average life to really just becoming an iconic songwriter that yeah. so many people just look up to. Yeah, because he just, Every song of his, the stories are just like, you can't, they're so simple and so awesome. You know what I mean? Like, greatest stories. I sat down with him, was at Meet and Three. And it was like him and um, they all used to go to Meet and Three on Fridays. You know, if you go to around 11 in Nashville, you would see them. But this was years ago. And so my drummer was in town and we went to the Meet and Three. And Prine was there, Vince Gill was there, all these dudes sitting down and then John Prine had no problem taking a picture with my drummer and I. You know what I mean? He was like, absolutely. I was like, and I would have never asked for that, but my drummer really wanted it. I was like, yeah, I kind of want one too. (laughs) I was like, I'm totally in. But it was like, God, we lost a big one with that one. It was like, bastards. Yeah. Ignoring, sorry. <laughs> He's like, Bruh. big star in the take me back video. That's uh, <laughs> that looked like a lot of fun to do too. And um, another great video is easy. That's that's really oh, thank cool. you. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know what? That one was so cool. Like Brady, I was like, yeah, let's do him black and white. You know, because you just don't ever do that anymore. And I don't know, that one was fun because he was like, I like this just rawness, like just the emotion part. And I go, I didn't think I was going to like it. And I was like, really? It fits the song, you know? That's an old song too that I finally recorded. I've had that song in my, I probably wrote it in like 2003, 2004. I just it never did. recorded it. Yeah. You know? It's weird. Never Taking- throw the notebook away. That's what I always say. It's like, you, you just never know how that can resurrect itself. Yeah, dude, I love that though. You know, when you, I always tell writers, whenever you just get bored and you just feel like bleh about whatever you're doing, go back and look at those old journal books, open them up and see how much you've grown. You know, like I read stuff and I go, man, my lyrics are so much better now, you know, or God, I got through a crazy rough time. I remember that, you know, but you forget things and you forget how much you've accomplished or how great your journey has been, you know, especially like music videos. It's the best part about music videos. Show a whole little movie. It's only four minutes. Sweet. We could do that. Very easy. I can handle this. I like it a lot. (laughs) So do you have, you have three albums? Do you have more than that now? I have six. Six. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. They're not all online because during the pandemic, I realized that, because I was just kind of scrubbing my stuff, making sure I have everything up. And like three of the records have not been put on iTunes because what I used to do is until I made my money back from sales live of the CDs ah are you still there (laughs) sorry (laughs) let me make sure it's plugged in hold hat I do this every time I'm such a dork but um is I totally lost my train of thought 
that messed me up. The other three albums that are, they're digital. So I would make back all my money before I would put them digital. And I guess I just never put them up. I was like, my bad. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have any help. You just get like lost in the scene going, ah. <laughs> so actually I have them all in my queue and I've been uploading and doing all the thumbnails and stuff. So they'll be up there soon. There's yeah. also an old record under the name Jules, J-U-L-E-S. Uh -huh. That was my very first album, if you ever want to go check that. It's funny. Oh, wow. See a little nugget there, too. Wow, it's good recording history. You've logged some uh, good stuff out there. What's your, what's your favorite, uh, really favorite album or favorite single? Probably my favorite album that I've done is... Oh, shit. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's... They're like, like your babies, I'm sure. I think it's Letting Go is like my favorite album I've done because I think just the whole complete package of it, I love. Everything down from the picture to the time of my life it was and all the songs in there, they're all a little different. Um, my favorite song, probably, it's a song called This Feeling and it's actually kind of slower and it's real, um, Dan Lavery produced, I think it's on Echoes of My Head, it's the very first song and it's just really got a lot more keyboards in it and just some cool ambient sounds, you know, which I normally don't, people don't tend to produce that on my records, which I, I like all the weird, fun stuff on there. Why not? Yeah. When, so where do you yeah. usually, do you record here in Atlanta or has this just been in various uh, cities? I have actually never recorded in Atlanta. Yeah, with all the recording studios, Southern Tracks is like legendary if it's still around. Uh, I know, it's so them. expensive. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure. It's insanely expensive. And honestly, it was cheaper for me to drive back and forth to Nashville to record this last record. Wow. And get it done to completion with mixing than to do it here. And it was, they did a great job. I was like, or chance to start again record. I flew to Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. LA did the record in a week and flew back. And it was cheaper than doing it here. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I'm right around the corner from, uh, you probably know, a Tree Sound Studios. Uh, yeah, because you and I live not far. Yeah. yeah. Tree Sound's really expensive. Paul Diaz is a beautiful, beautiful person. It's a beautiful studio. I just can't afford it. <laughs> like, yeah. I've been by it a zillion times, I know. <laughs> legends have been in there but yeah i'm sure it's it's outrageous yeah mama don't have that checkbook for that <laughs> I'm not gonna i just you know and i feel like you've got when you're doing i guess maybe i'm old school about it you've gotta like the person you're recording with do you oh. know what i mean like you gotta vibe and you gotta have some sort of when you walk in that place it kind of feels special to you and otherwise doing vocals playing music's different but doing your vocals, like personal songs, it's really hard. Like you've got to find that place where you just feel awesome. You know, maybe it's the dark room. Like I always turn all the lights off. I don't want any light. Yeah. Like it's super dark and just like kind of go back to wherever I'm supposed to be in my mind, you know, cause it's an acting job. Damn it. <laughs> acting. Well, that's what the producer is there for, to make you feel comfortable, make sure you have the right mic. And if it's an old school ribbon mic or you, know, you have your magic carpet under you, it's like, yeah, you gotta be in the vibe. Totally, man. I mean, that's, you know, it's like, that's what's been so weird. I think about all the, the Zoom meetings and the, in the um, Facebook Live and stuff. You know, it's, it's like, I've been working so hard to make the music room, which is what I call it. It's usually a living room for most people. <laughs> but, you know, into a vibey space that I feel good when I'm playing music. So I know it's my little hole that I can go into. And it's, I don't sleep in here. I don't eat in here. You know, it's like, it's separate. Because it has to be. I'm sure, you know. Oh, yeah. We all need a little, little space. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I do so much television production work. I'm doing it from the kitchen table. I've been for the last eight months. And my stuff's getting beamed out all over the place. I mean, that's so weird. That's so it's all weird. Over 
yeah, that's gotta be so weird though, you know? Like all yeah. these people have you know, their meetings from home all the time and then they're like trying to keep their kids doing their work down the hall. I'm like, dude, I can't even imagine. It's enough of my dog snoring beside me and kicking me every now and then. I think she's full on snoring right now, but whatever. You gotta do, I do have a new um, album coming out at some point. It's already recorded. It just oh, needs wow. to be mixed. And the people who had the record, the problem is they still can't get in the building to ah. finish mixing. It's been closed since March. <laughs> so not master tapes anymore. It's all files. It's like, we can't get in there. We can't get yeah. all of it. But isn't that crazy? Because it's like all this weird equipment that they have to use that's only particular to there. Like, it's just, I'm like, dang it. So I had him transfer the files to Atlanta. Okay. So some point we'll be remixing. I need to change some stuff on it, add some stuff to it. But I mean, that was done back in fe early February. Yeah. Like, oh. Maybe you'll have a fresh perspective on it, you know, picking it back up where you left it off. And, you know, what makes you think when you're going through mixing, though, what do you listen for? Are there particular things that, that most of us wouldn't even know to listen for that you notice? Totally. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what I think a lot of what I hear the most is just the, the balance between all the instruments and then the vocals, if they sound too, like people always, it's just the way it is. We people always tend to put a lot of crap on top of vocals to make them sound perfect. I don't want perfect. Yeah. Because if people wanted perfect, they would go listen to like super pop music. Do you know what I mean? Like the sure. beauty of if you're do it, trying to do storytelling is that, you know, little glitches in your voice are what makes your voice your voice. And if it's perfect, they stop listening because they're going to come to your show at some point and they're not going to hear that. So do whatever you're going to be doing at your shows. That's the way I see it. But that's mainly what I listen. I look, I'm, I would say the vocals are probably the most important for me because I want my story to get out there properly. But then the fact of, if you're listening it, would you listen on a road trip? That's my whole thing. That's like every record I've had. Yeah. You've played in so many different places. The first time I ever saw you was for a Braves game. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my God, I remember that. <laughs> were you at the one were you at the one where um the mascot baseball head dude came and danced and took the banjo? I didn't Did see that part. It might have been the okay. same day. It was uh, May of two thousand nine. It might have been that one because I remember he grabbed the banjo out of my banjo player's hand. My banjo player was like, like he was <laughs> freaking out. He's like, dude, because he has like a really nice banjo. And I was like, oh my God, my banjo player is going to kill the mascot, dude. <laughs> you don't get paid for those things. Like you got to bring all your own equipment. You don't oh. get paid a dime. You don't even get fed. Nothing. Totally free. And you can't sell CDs. So you can make no money. It's the most ridiculous thing ever with a company that's got a crap ton of money. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh, they put your name on the marquee. That's how I noticed it. I, just, I remember snapping yeah. the photo. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. But that's what's so sad, though, is because I'm like, think about all the people you just saw you play, but you can't actually promote yourself. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> I did it twice, and this, the third time I was like, this is so much work, man. I was like, I can't. But see, now they have that, what is it, the club over there that everyone plays at it's a oh, venue at the, it, yeah they, it's called the battery over there at uh true yeah. park yeah yeah but it's all big cover bands it's like tribute bands that play there so which exactly fine. yeah i'm exactly. gonna make a Bengals foo fighters tribute band <laughs> so like half of it'll be like crazy hair <laughs> and i'll be singing Bengals songs like this so my neck hurts so i can't really do it the right way and then the other half will be like rocked out Foo Fighters headed fronted by a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like as you get older, like you're, you're just destined to always be in a tribute band. Cause that's what happens to every great Atlanta artist. They always have to give a tribute band to pay for their families at some point. I swear. It's just like really caught on like wildfire. I, I would love to do a documentary on it or something. Just oh my God. Tributes. <laughs> Even just in Atlanta, that would be a great documentary because there's so many of them that are literally, they're making a crap ton of money. Like they're doing very well and God bless you, man, do it. I don't think I could do it, man. Yeah. You have to. 
it's hard to establish yourself as as a true original artist. That's the whole thing. Because again, everybody wants to hear the hits, and it yeah. just gets stuck. I will tell you though, is that I had a moment. It was like three months ago. I play in the Duluth, you know, the amphitheater stage they have there. Right, downtown Duluth. Yeah, and it was like six to nine on Friday, and they did it during the lockdown because they wanted to start people start having some music done there. So it was right after like the some of the stuff had lifted. And I said to the band, I said, okay, we'll do the first set will be all covers. The second set will be all originals with one cover at the end, right? I said, I just want to try something out and just see what happens. There was more people dancing and having fun on the second set on all the original music. That's when everybody came and sat down. And then the lady said she got some voicemails about it, about yeah. how much they loved it. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Just bring them good original music and they will come. I promise. I was like, Yes. So we proved it, man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> do you have your instrument nearby if you want to do a few tunes or? Yeah. I couldn't notice if I was like, ah, I don't know if you're in the mood. I always, it's like, I can't tell if there's a guitar sitting there. <laughs> I always got my baby over here. Hang on, let me go. Okay, I'm set up. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if I use like any of your music video or clips or anything, I hate getting these copyright war warnings on YouTube. If oh, I don't care. You can use it. <laughs> I'm just gonna do um I'm gonna do stuff from the new one because it, it'll be out soon, but that way it's a little you know. Cool. How many do you want me to do? I uh, you could just you know do one before we end. I, I think I'm a lot of one hour here on Zoom, so uh we can go a little past uh our, our end time here at eight o'clock. I'll do um I'll do take me back. So this is on the new one, I think it's no this is my favorite too, right now. Stand cover toes, smothered in remnants of a decade ago. But now the dream keeps telling me to go. Learn how to disappear in the mills and edges. Every new city's got a story. Please stole my things. I got lots full of pictures, couple books, and this guitar. Journals and essentials in your band and heart. Ooh, and I'm just hoping this city will take me back. I smoked a little too much green before that bottle of wine. And I'm telling myself I'm just fine, rising, wishing shy. Lots of old pictures, couple books, and this guitar. Some journals and essentials and an abandoned heart. Ooh, and I'm just hoping this city will take me back. Back to the beginning, false starts and ends justifying the means. Back to the similar, the familiar we trust in our dreams. I got a box full of pictures, couple books, and a guitar. Some journals and essentials in your bed and heart. Ooh, and I'm just hoping this city, yeah, I just, I hope this city will take me back. And the crowd goes, oh, man. <laughs> That's a shortened version, so we can fit it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. These things can be kind of long. I so, talk a lot, too, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it's, oh, it's, it's great. Uh, thank you so much. Gosh, this thank is you. fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Me, it too. Kind of popped in my head. It's like I've known Julie on here for years now. I mean, we got on Facebook ages totally. ago. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, long right. time ago. <laughs> no, man, I really appreciate that. This has really, man, brightened up my months. <laughs> S -S -S -S. <laughs> and you're performing okay. mainly in the Atlanta area these days? Yeah, right now. I'm kind of not super traveling yet, but hopefully soon enough I miss it. Hi, spring. And Facebook are living and everybody can, uh, yeah. you know, Venmo, PayPal, what is that, Cash App? Is that another? Yeah. One? Most people don't use it. It's super young, young use Cash App, I think. 
I don't really use it, but whatever. <laughs> it's there in case. I'll take it any way I got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Totally. Good. Absolutely. I just support these artists. It's just been such a tough time. And, yeah, it's been uh, weird. We just want to play and hopefully we'll all be together and get this vaccine out and we can all be better. I know. I just miss hugging and partying. Yeah. I miss the most. It's hugging fans. Do you know what I mean? I know that sounds stupid, but it's so important and you, there's so much love and happiness and joy from it. It's just like, wee. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but human touch is really important and it's missing. And I think that causes a lot of this malaise, this depression with a lot of us. So. Totally. I know. It's sad. But it's musicians like you who make it better and get us through Thanks, all man. And you too, because you're spreading the word and having fun. I this really is big for us too. It's a big deal. Well, take care. I Thank will uh, hopefully see you in person soon one day. I can't wait. I know. Anytime, man. You know, because there's lots of outdoor out, outdoor fun now too. And you live right around the corner, literally. I think we're like 10 minutes from each other. Oh, really? In Gwinnett. Yeah. Because I'm Duluth. I mean, I'm like right corners. close to the square. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you'll be playing the town green here the, in Peachtree Corners. I'm actually playing um, Duluth this all weekend. I'm playing Thursday night, Friday night in Duluth. Oh, nice. Both nights. They're outdoors and free and just three hours during like dinner time-ish. So come down if you want. It would be awesome. We got to hook you up over here too to, to Peachtree Corners. We have a nice stage in the town green here right off of Peachtree Parkway. I, dude, I've seen that thing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's a really, really nice setup. Oh, yeah. And that custard place, shut your mouth. <laughs> I was like, y'all need to stop it. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much again, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Be in touch soon. All right, Nikki says bye to you. Who's it? Nikki. <laughs> She's a dead asleep dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Now I know how to use Zoom, too. ka -ching. Yeah, it's looking great. We'll try to get this on soon. I'll, I'll try to uh, do a little editing. You want to be known as singer-songwriter? Sure. Your Whatever. Sub font, as we call it. <laughs> I know. The sub font. You dumb. <laughs> get that right. <laughs> I know. I like, it doesn't matter. Julie Gribble, whatever they find me. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. This Take care. Awesome. Have a good one. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.